Hello and welcome to another video from Stanley Gibbons YouTube here at 399 Strand. I'm George James, Head of Commonwealth here, and it's my great pleasure to be joined this morning by John Aitchison, who is Keeper of the Role of Distinguished Philatelists. So John, just give me an idea of the history and how, how, this, uh, how, the, how the role came about. Yes, certainly, George. Well, this all came from an idea that started around about 1920, when a group of eminent philatelists in the UK decided that it was about time that we had uh, an award of merit for eminent philatelists who had uh, gone the extra mile to support the hobby. Eventually, a title was come up with, which was uh, the role of distinguished philatelists, and at the first uh, signing ceremony, which was held in uh, Harrogate in 1921, 25 names were added to the role and seven of them attended to sign. Prior to that, they were very honoured that King George V had already signed it and his name appears at the top of the roll. When the calligrapher designed the scroll, as well as allowing for the names of the signatories in the centre portion, they also decided to add a column at each side with a number of banners where names were added of eminent philatelists known as the fathers of philately who had already died when the role was instigated. Names were added from all over the world, but they did leave two empty scrolls in the bottom left and right hand corners. As this was done in 1920, there was obviously still some animosity between uh, the United Kingdom and the German powers after the First World War. And it was noticeable that no German names were added to the list of fathers of philately. And in fact, it was 1931 until the first German signed the role. In 2021, we had the centenary signing and returned to the site of the original signing, which was Harrogate in Yorkshire. On that occasion, we decided to rectify this historic injustice by adding a German and an Austrian name to the Fathers of Philately. And these can be seen in the bottom corners of the roll here. These names were selected by a committee headed up by the eminent German philatelist and bibliophile Wolfgang Massen. And they selected two names to represent all of the Germans and Austrians who would have deserved to have had their names inserted uh, at the time. And how are the signatories for the role selected and chosen? Well, George, the role of distinguished philatelist has a board of election, and the board of election comprises of eight uh, existing signatories to the role, four from the United Kingdom and four from elsewhere in the world. And every year they meet to select suitable signatories from a long list of nominations that have been received. Nominations are accepted from other royal societies, uh, national and international stamp organisations, and British specialist societies. In a typical year, they'll maybe select four or five uh, new signatories, but there is no maximum or minimum number. When they select them, they have four main criteria they look at. The first one is, Philatelic research or other significant works made available to others, including publications and journalistic activities. Then they also look at the formation of notable collections, which have been exhibited or displayed for the benefit of philately. Also promotional work, including the giving of displays, seminars and presentations. And organisational work at a high level in connection with running philatelic exhibitions, congresses or societies. Internationally recognised high honours are also included. Okay, so talk to me a bit about the international nature of the role. I can see there's you know, a huge variety of countries here. Yes, indeed, George. Uh, as I'd already mentioned, we have almost 400 signatories now. In fact, the actual number at the moment is 396. Uh, they re represent 41 different countries uh, from five continents. Uh, currently, there are 89 living signatories from 26 countries. And as you can see, we are now filling five full pages of parchment. Uh, the, the latest page 
having been instigated in 2014 at the signing ceremony at Ypres in Belgium. And where does it, where does it normally live? Where is it housed normally? Rather unexcitingly in a vault at the Royal Philatelic Society London where it's uh, safe and dry and well looked after. Uh, but it is periodically on public display and uh, people would be most welcome to come along and see it. Uh, so in 2022, we have it displayed right next to the Stanley Gibbon stand at the London 2022 International Stamp Exhibition. I should mention Stanley Gibbons have for a very long time now been one of the main sponsors of the role and we're very grateful for their financial assistance in this. Uh, during the London 2022 exhibition, we also have the 2022 signing ceremony which will take place at the Royal Philatelic Society in London from about 4 p.m. on Monday the 21st of February. Now this is a public event and anyone is welcome to come along, uh, see it being signed and look at the role at the same time. So aside from appearing on what is a fantastically prestigious list, are there any other honours that go along with uh, actual physically signing the list? Uh, yes indeed. Uh, once the signatories have uh, actually applied their signature to the role, they're then presented with a certificate to show that they are now an RDP, and they all receive uh, a small bronze plaquette, which uh, has on it uh, a representation of the first page of the role, and the back of this is engraved with their name. They then also have the right to use the letters RDP after their name, which you may frequently see on exhibition entries or publication titles, and it is considered a, a very prestigious honour. The one thing that really comes across is uh, these, from these fathers of philately names, uh, even though they were, they'd all actually died by 1920, the legacy they left behind is absolutely phenomenal. You look at names uh, we've seen in previous videos like uh, Ferrari, uh, Maori and Moens, uh, Daniel Cooper, they, these names live on in philately. Uh, forever, which I guess is the idea. So from this list, who's, who are the guys that, that you respect the most? Well, there are two names there that stand out to me. I'm not saying they're necessarily the most eminent ones, but Tilliard and Tapling. And their names resonate with me because they live on in other philatelic merit awards. The Tilliard and Tapling medals are awarded every year by the Royal Philatelic Society London. So they were clearly very eminent in their fields at the time. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us this morning, John. Uh, what are your uh, hopes for the, the future for the role? Well, we've just completed our first 100 years, uh, as I said, with almost 400 signatories. The momentum behind the role now is uh, increasing. It's becoming more and more international every year. And I have every confidence that 100 years from now, the role will still be going strong. There will probably be 10 pages by then and we'll be somewhere near 800 to 1,000 signatories. All right, well, thank you very much for viewing today. Come back in future on the channel. There's a lot of the names on here that you'll see uh, in future videos. Thank you again to John. It's been a great pleasure, um, and, and thank you just for bringing it in.